Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about the first level of display. We decided to do past waveform display. Um, so essentially what you have here is this is the present, and then you have past one, past two. Um, How so far in the past is further? So what it's one mode play. So okay. essentially, yeah, whatever, whenever this changes shape, it just goes back here. So uh, that's why it, sometimes it's difficult to see. It'll be a little bit more obvious the more waveform it is. But um, yeah, you'll see the they will be different. Um, we tried doing the future, but it just turned out to be more uh, more work than we thought it was worth. There's also um, like scaling too, so we can independently scale the x and y axis to different um, to different values. So you have like this is the smallest x value, that's the next largest, and you have the next largest, and then you can actually do full screen um, with the x, and then the same goes for the y. You have why is that's the smallest there? And then you can also go. So what happened to your past waveform displays when you did that? Did they just go away? Uh, yeah, I made them go away. I didn't want to really include that or it would if for the full waveform display which would get kind of weird having that overlap and stuff. But yeah, why can also go all the way up to um, full screen too. So this would be the full screen for each other and stuff. So it would become very pixelated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is. Um, basically, the reason, obviously, why is because I just missed slice just to get the um, amplitude and magnitude mm -hmm. correct. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then before we play, uh, what I did was uh, on my spark. Uh, I can't, obviously, can't say it now, but um, it looked really good on the model soon. Uh, so you can actually see how the, the waveforms are kind of shifted a little bit. Not shifted, but uh, distorted. Um, and I made, I scaled them. Uh, I did. First, second, and third harmonic, and I scaled them by like 28 and 116. So the effect isn't really that big because we had a lot of other uh, audio uh, extension that we did on anyone that to overpower, uh, which you could hear from the other ones. Um, I did a lot of audio related things as well as the LED cube here. Uh, first thing I did was fast forward and rewind. Uh, it's very simple. If you're in fast forward or rewind modes, you decrease the duration that each note plays for. And depending on whether you're in fast forward or rewind, you just step through the song wrong, either forward or backwards. Um, I did a distortion effect that creates distortion, as heard in like an electric guitar, by changing the smooth sine waves that come into the module into square waves. And this is supposed to add distortion by adding in a whole bunch of different frequencies that aren't found in the original signal. Um, I also did exponential di decay with dynamics. Um, the decay rates are set through the song ROM, and you can have uh, there are, the different rates are accomplished by stepping through an exponential ROM at different step sizes. Uh, the exponential ROM has values from 0 to 32,767, which is the max sample that comes out of the sign ROM. And that sample from the exponential ROM is subtracted from the original audio sample, and it creates an exponential decay envelope that is then applied to the original sample through multiplication. And the multiplication that I used is uh, basically like bitwise multiplication and then shifts and adds in order to get around the problems posed by explicit multiplication. Uh, I also did chords. Uh, our song module can play up to four notes at a single time. And this is accomplished by instantiating four note players. And whenever the chord player gets a new note that it wants to play, it simply loads the first note player that is not currently busy playing the song. Um, and this makes it really easy to add pretty much as many notes as you want, because all the code for one note player is exactly identical to the ones for the other note players. Um, another thing I did is a wah-wah effect. Um, for those of you who know electric guitar, uh, the wah-wah effect is basically like a time vari varying frequency filter. Um, so depending on like what time you're at, different frequencies will be most will be strongest in the output signal. And so I did this by instantiating a couple of different um, sign readers. And they are all out of phase with one another. And each different sign output from the sign reader is the envelope for a different note that's being played. So you can see from 
here, uh, like it, the uh, the amplitude of each note kind of varies with time mm -hmm. according to a sign envelope, and those different sign envelopes are all out of phase with one another. So at one time, when this frequency is very strong, um, this frequency will be very weak because the um, sign envelopes are out of phase with one another. And then the next thing I did was uh, the LED cube here, which basically adds or acts as a music visualization tool for the, uh, the songs that are being played. Um, <laughs> It's controlled by a microchip microcontroller. Uh, there's 125 different LEDs. Um, it uses multiplexed uh, columns and planes to control all 125 LEDs with 30 IO pins. Um, it communicates with the FPGA through four <coughs> IO pins on the FPGA. And those IO uh, pins basically indicate how decayed the current note that is being played is. So, Depending on how far the current note has decayed, the LED cube will light up a different amount of layers or other patterns. And I use always valid timing for the communications between the FPGA and the uh, microcontroller, simply because the microcontroller clock is an internal oscillator and it's not all that stable. So if you try to do um, you know, like periodic valid timing or two-way flow control, it kind of breaks sometimes, so always valid timing was much safer. And so now we can demonstrate uh, some more stuff. Wrong way. No, no that's that's a oh, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that kind of works. Okay. Turn it on, all these songs. All right, so this first song is uh, Thunderstruck. It might not sound like that. Um, so you can see that like whenever a new load, note is loaded, um, the intensity gets really high, and then it decays throughout the uh, while the note is decaying. And this is the distortion effect. You can see that they're all square waves, um, and it does get quieter because you're kind of clipping some of the wave off. But they're uh, square waves, and then our final. This is probably like the easiest way to see what the cube is doing. Um, and some of the chords in that last note were applied with the different distortion and wall effects. So you could probably hear some slight difference between them. The difference isn't as pronounced as I expected when I created these modules, but um, the waveforms look very different from one another, even though the sound doesn't sound all that different. Is there a way you can hear the wall wall effect? Yeah, let's... Uh... Oh, and my favorite is fast forward and reverse. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun to play around with. Um, <laughs> There's some chords at the end of the song that have the different effects applied. Um, probably help Let's turn it up all the way. So I'll try to uh, indicate when the different effects are being played. It's, it's, a, it's the same chord. It's played for about two seconds without any effects, and then about two seconds with the wah wah effect of live. At the end of the song. That's blah, blah. I don't know why there's the buzzing, but um, it's slightly different. And you can definitely tell that the waveform changes when the wall effect is applied, but it's not uh, quite so apparent from the sound. What made you decide to do the past waveform rather than past note? Um, I think because we already have the waveform on the display side, I think just for simplicity and without having to change any other modules, um, that's what we did. Um, 
Ya. So you have both the distortion and harmonics. Um, you know, which which is easier to generate new sounds with? Because you can obviously generate exactly the same distorted waveform just by adding the right harmonics. You could, but you would have to add a very large number of harmonics. Um, I think, like the Fourier uh, analysis, it's like an infinite number of waveforms or different frequencies to create a perfect square wave. I have one more effect on the Q. expands outwards and inwards rather than just the different layers. But um, one of the really difficult things about this is that you can only have one layer lit up at a time due to current restrictions of the microcontroller. So whenever you see more than one layer lit up at one time, it's actually switching between the layers very quickly and tricking your eye into thinking that they're all lit up at one time. 